In a conversation with fellow comedian and podcaster Russell Brand on his podcast, Joe Rogan called out billionaire Bill Gates for his involvement in public health matters. Let's watch. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation profited millions of dollars on the vaccines. Millions. Yeah. Millions and millions of dollars. It's all easy to find. And then once he dumped the stock... Then he completely changed his narrative and he started talking about how ineffective the vaccines were and about how the virus wasn't as bad as we thought it was and about it was mostly targeting old and obese people. Like this is f wild because this is the same guy that through the entire pandemic was talking about how great these vaccines are and these vaccines are so effective and they stop the virus and they stop transmission, they stop infection. And all that was a lie. And he profited off those lies. Yes. And no, everyone wants to pre pretend that he's just like this amazing philanthropist. Like, no, he made a lot of money. This, yeah. is, this is motivated by money. And his entire career, he's been motivated by money. I mean, it's, it's a fair point. It's something we've explored on this show. Uh, the timeline does, in fact, fit. Uh, he sold uh, he sold those st uh, stocks in in uh, Pfizer, and he was an advocate of the vaccine technology. And look, I'm, I'm not saying that that's necessarily wrong. Again, I don't, we talked about this in an earlier segment. I don't stigmatize people for wanting to make money, but you can make money. But then if you also have like total control over the public discourse of what people are allowed to think and discuss, and you command public policy people that can mandate this, can require it, people can't come into the country right now unless they can, like still, still the U.S., uh, um, unless they get that vaccine. So I, I think that's the frustration, is that someone in a, in a position to benefit, and did benefit, as Rogan notes, very much financially from the vaccines, you know, then, and, and now is pivoting. And it, it, it's absolutely, it's wild to hear what Bill Gates has to say about vaccine technology today versus at the start of the pandemic. He, he talked about, we're going to look to do a, uh, did you hear about, the, what, what's the thing, it's like, a, it's like an inhaler type thing, right, that'll stop you from getting COVID. He started talking about this the other day. What do you want to bet? He's going to invest in something like that. It'll be the next big thing, make a lot of money, and then you will change courses again. Right. So I wanted to ask you that. I'm just not following it as closely. So he did have a shift in his rhetoric around the vaccines after he dumped the stock? Yes. It's incredible what he said more recently about, uh, we, we played it, so Brie and I talked about this a couple weeks back, this interview of him saying about how the vaccines are not, like it's night and day, what he's saying now. Uh, and, and, and look, I think what he's saying now is correct. Probably should have been, you know, tampered down expectations a little bit the first time around. But he talks about how this is not, you know, this is not, uh, it's, it's not doing a lot for cases at all, um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, it's not maybe ideal for people to need to be injected over and over again. A lot, you know, a lot of people don't want to be injected over and over again. And it just sounds totally different, and it fits the timeline for selling, for, for dumping stocks, making tons of money from, um, off, of, uh, off of Pfizer. Yeah, so he said, he said that it's missing, it, it's not... So, so then, and then he was talking about this spray that will stop you from getting COVID, which has not been invented yet. Uh, and, uh, and, and, so, and so, look, I think, people, I think people deserve, I think viewers, I think the public deserves to know. It's, it's not, I don't want to stop him from speaking, obviously. I don't want to even stop him from making money. But when public policy is at stake, when we're all going to be required to do this thing, I mean, that's the, that's the point where I... I want there not to be the mandatory intervention, but because he commands, uh, he has so much influence on policymakers, uh, you know, and there, there was th just this consensus among elites, among people who were going to force, I mean, they're going to add the vaccine. They wanted to add the vaccine to the, um, to the re registry so that then it, it might be, because of that, required in certain schools. Um, still, university campuses, still, my alma mater, University of Michigan, is going to require the, uh, the, um, the bivalent booster. Uh, e even though I, I don't think there's a tremendous health necessity for requiring that, um, it's not going to do enough for cases to prevent like an outbreak of coronavirus on the campus. Um, and th this is a you know an age population that isn't particularly at risk of negative COVID outcomes. The bivalent, there are serious questions about whether it even does anything in addition to the booster. And on and on and on. All, you know, these are all things that I still feel skittish sharing these opinions because it was so uh, difficult to talk about them on social media because there was so much censorship around it and you getting in trouble for saying it, even though it's all come true. A lot of it. A lot of the skepticism has become justified. Right. I think the point you're making is so important, which is that 
if Bill Gates was just a private entrepreneur, wanted to invest his money here, invest his money there and say what he wanted, you know, about his investments, like no one would really have a problem with that, right? Like in the, in the context of, you know, the marketplace or what have you. The problem is that there is 100% agreement between the billionaire class of people like Bill Gates and then the media class who are supposed to tell us the truth and, you know, or do their best to do so, which they don't. And then the social media tech industry, right? And together there was collusion between these three and then the government to force you to become a slave to the thing that ended up profiting Bill Gates, right? So on its own, he could invest his money wherever he wants, right? He could say whatever he wants and then he could, you know, do whatever he wants, right? But it's it's the the thing that made this such an outrage and such an injustice was that the government was sort of putting its finger on the scales and that there was this collusion between elites in all these different arenas to criminalize disagreeing in a way that put billions of dollars in his pocket. And I think that that is the thing that the American people really have a problem with more so than just, you know, him, you know, getting to have his say, you know, it's that he takes his money and it has, you know, it not even just, and this is a point I make a lot, you know, his influence is not because he took his money and created the Gates Foundation and then from there had all his minions doing his bidding. Of course, you get some amount of influence there. That's for sure true. But that doesn't create a totally compliant government, a totally compliant media, and a totally compliant social media system. The thing that creates total compliance from those entities is a class solidarity of all of these people who have been educated in the same places and have complete class solidarity and economic interests in common. That's my kind of Marxism coming out here. (laughs) Um, But I I really think that you need something that deep because there's no inherent reason why the left should have been on the side of, you know, this kind of Foucauldian bio interference, right? Creating this like mass of people who are completely compliant and to the to the state in this way, right? Like 30 years ago, 50 years ago, it would have been the right pushing for that and the left saying this is, you know, the biological authoritarianism, right? There's no natural reason why that should have happened. And in fact, in Scandinavia, as you point out all the time in our peer countries, Leftists were completely on the side of what was the Republican position here. Why should a child take this? No, you need to give me a doctor's note to justify Mm -hmm. putting that in a child's body, right? That was the leftist point of view in many other countries. It's class solidarity in this country, and that class solidarity, it it, it extends to billionaires because they also have that same education, that same worldview that is sort of safetyist and protectionist and sort of, you know, paternalistic in nature and believes in controlling people. And I think that's really the bigger story here. Mm, Absolutely. Well, that does it for us for today. Tomorrow on Rising, I'll be back at this desk with Brianna Joy Gray. Bacha, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you. I'll be watching. Well, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're now available anywhere that you consume podcasts. Take care and see you on Tuesday.